Equity crowdfunding, it's a way to raise capital from investors around the world. In this podcast, we have on DealMaker, one of the premier equity crowdfunding websites. He's going to share valuable insights on how to raise capital for your own business and get it funded. DealMaker was a technology platform that helped the Green Bay Packers raise millions of dollars for stock certificate sale for their new Lambeau Field improvement. They raised over $54 million and over 165,000 shares were distributed. This was a record-breaking equity crowdfunding campaign and just goes to show the power of this new vehicle. Dealmaker also did Miso Robotics equity crowdfunding raise. They were the technology platform that allowed them to raise over $50 million to help fund the future of robotics and to help the entire restaurant industry move into robotic automation and to overall help people be more efficient with running their businesses. So you're going to want to watch the entire episode. Thanks. Top thought leaders. Today, we have on Aaron Shafton, a director at DealMaker, one of the top equity crowdfunding platforms. He's going to share some valuable insights on what is equity crowdfunding, some success stories on some of the projects that have gone through their platform, some strategies you can use for launching your own, dispelling some of the common uh, misconceptions with it, and even sharing some of the bis- biggest mistakes that you should avoid when launching your own equity crowdfunding. Welcome, Aaron. Hey, thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Awesome. And so just a highlight, you know, what is equity crowdfunding? Kind of give us an introduction and just high level overview of what it is. Yeah, for sure. So I think when a lot of people hear the word crowdfunding, right, they they correctly, you know, think a lot of like Kickstarter or Indiegogo, right? It's a project that I'm funding. It's like a, there's a guitar company I want to support and I'm going to throw in a hundred bucks and I'll get to pre-order it or I'll get a discount. I'll get a t-shirt. Um, equity crowdfunding is using that kind of same approach to a different end. So using the power of the crowd, a community of people, your fans, your followers, people who are excited about what you're doing, uh, using them to help you raise money. So perhaps instead of, or perhaps alongside going to venture capital or going to a big strategic investor to, to make it to your seed round or your series A, you say, well, I want my customers to be able to invest. I want my community of, of fans to be able to invest. Um, equity crowdfunding lets you facilitate that. They 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 invest in the company. You get the capital. They get usually ownership of some kind, right? A, an equity stake or maybe a debt of some kind. Um, but yeah, it's unlocking capital from the crowd. Nice. And so you shared some very famous campaigns that people may have seen. Maybe can you highlight some of your successful uh, case studies uh, that have gone through the DealMaker platform? Yeah, of course. I mean, we we see, you know, offerings of all shapes and sizes. We've had the opportunity to support, you know, some really big um, offerings. There are kind of two mechanisms, and I'm sure we'll chat about this later on. You can, when you're raising from the crowd, you can do it as a regulation A plus offering, which is the bigger one, or you can do it as a regulation CF offering, which is the smaller one. Um, and we've had people raise, you know, upwards of 40, 50, $70 million uh, through Regulation A+. Miso Robotics is this incredible company. They make robots that you know work, kind of work in fast food restaurants and support the staff cooking burgers and, and frying fries. Um, they, they've been really successful with Regulation A+. Um, companies like Brazil Potash have you know, unlocked capital from a community of people um, upward to $40 million. So there's really exciting stuff there. Um, on the smaller exemption side, regulation crowdfunding, we work with, again, companies of all shapes and sizes. Um, a company called Trustamp comes to mind. They raised $5 million, which is the max on a regulation crowdfund. And they use that momentum to uplist uh, onto the NASDAQ, which is really exciting. That's incredible. So for both startups and I'm guessing um, some mature companies as well, uh, they are using equity crowdfunding for capital and who's it really geared towards or? Totally. I mean, I think obviously, you know, it's, it's private investing, right? So generally speaking, these are pre-IPO companies. That doesn't mean once you've done an IPO, you can't do equity crowdfunding. There are a lot of stories on our platform. Um, of people, you know, doing regulation A rounds 
once they're already public, but the majority of companies it's, you know, end up being pre-IPO. Um, I think we're seeing as the space evolves, right? People have been doing these successful rounds for a number of years and the interest in it is growing this little segment of the market, you know, earlier stage companies, sure, it continues to be an interesting outlet for them if they have a community, but more and more sophisticated companies are coming into the space, which is really exciting. And now investors who are interested in this sort of thing have so many options, you know, to look at when they want to expand their portfolio. Very nice. You touched on a keyword community. So what do you see the best projects do that makes them successful to be able to raise, you know, tens of millions of dollars or even have a successful equity crowdfunding campaign? You t- totally. So, you know, think about like if we use a, a semi random number, like $10 million, even if we say $5 million, which is the max of regulation crowdfunding, the smaller um, exemption. If people are putting in on average $500 to $1,000, you need a lot of people to fill up that round, right? The spirit of equity crowdfunding is that you're going out to a big community. And it, like I said, it's a democratized process. People are coming in. Um, and, and putting in these kind of smaller amounts. So you need a community that you can go to, to, to find that capital. We typically say that there's kind of three ways to go out to a community. It can be a community you already have, right? So if, if you, whatever founder is listening to this, if you or a company you work with, you know, you've got a, a big Instagram following or a huge Discord server, people that, you, that trust you and who believe in what you're doing or they're customers of your, your product already, right? That's a community you own. You already have it and you can go to it. And this is a great way to unlock capital from that community. If you don't already have an existing community, some people succeed in buying one. And by that, I mean marketing, right? There Mm -hmm. are some ideas that are just so exciting, right? That if you advertise online through TikTok ads and Facebook and Instagram, you know, the opportunity to invest in this really exciting company doing this really cool project you'll get interested people and those people will become your community, right? You advertise to them and bring them in. Um, the other option is, you know, to kind of borrow a community and that's to, to win the favor of someone influential, right? If there's someone in your network or your sphere who, who has, you know, maybe investors following them, like there are people like that in the world, they write investment newsletters, they moderate groups, you know, they, if they find your offering favorable, then that's, you know, a new community that, that you've unlocked. So there's lots of ways to bring a community into an offering. The great ones do at least one of those three, if not more than one at the same time. Wow. That's great. And so walk us through some of the mechanics and even in the thinking from a marketing side and thinking how funnels work, what is the, the idea you have something exciting? How do you get them really through that process? And like, what are the mechanics uh, if you have like specifics? on how campaigns can do it? I mean, that it's definitely a tough, it's a tough question, right? Because marketing is really hard, right? When you, when you do equity crowdfunding, you're kind of unlocking two things. You're unlocking the ability to tell a lot of people about what you're doing, and you're unlocking the ability for the everyday person to participate, right? Mm-hmm. Usually a private financing, you can't really tell people about it. And only certain people can come in. So mm-hmm. those two things are very important. And obviously telling that story is really important to the first one, the marketing. Um, So there's lots of ways to sell stuff, right? Lots of ways to tell a good story. Um, That's probably a question bigger than this podcast, but I do think, you know, the best offerings find a way to make what they're doing really interesting to, Mm -hmm. to, to a specific type of investor, right? I think a company even early on in their life cycle, probably knows what kind of people are excited about what they do. It could be the same thing as their customers. If they're selling a beer, for example, they know their customers and their customers mm-hmm. will be the same people that want to invest in this. That shouldn't discourage, you know, Miso Robotics we just talked about sells robots to like giant quick serve restaurant chains, but people are really interested in robotics, right? I'm really interested in robotics. Yeah. So if you identify that type of person who, who might represent your potential investor, and then you craft a story that really compels them, right? Shows what you're doing, makes them want to believe in the journey that your team is going on, that your industry is going on. Um, and then you're iterative with that. You really mm-hmm. keep an eye on what works and you, you adapt it over time. That, that's a recipe for success to really succeed with anything. Nice. And in terms of time frame and just, you know, campaigns, when should people start looking at an equity crowdfunding campaign or just any uh, insights there? 
I think it'll it'll depend a little bit, right? And that's you know something I'm always excited to talk with founders about. Um, we see a mix of you know people who are early on in their company's life cycle, and there's excitement around what they're doing, or they believe that there's going to be excitement about what they're doing, and equity crowdfunding represents an early financing for their business, a seed level financing, for example, seed stage. Um, and that's really cool. There are other examples of companies that have gone through traditional financings, right? They've, they're into the series A, B, C kind of world, and they're either replacing the next level of that process with the crowdfund, or they're doing it alongside a traditional round. They're still going to do their series D, they're going to go out, to their venture capital people, but they're going to carve out a portion of that big round and customers can come in, for example, right? Like that's a really exciting concept. So there's lots of variety there. I've also heard people say that a crowdfund can sit really well between rounds. Obviously, none of this is investment advice. I'm not qualified to, to do that, but I do hear from founders that you know, I'm in between my seed and I'm not ready for a series A. So I think I might go out and try to bring my customers in or bring this community of people in. That's really exciting too, because you're, you'll have a little bit more control over your destiny. Very nice. Maybe you can share more. What would, you know, what are some of the common hesitations people have before launching an equity crowdfunding campaign? And um, yeah. Yeah, I think there's probably two, like, you know, the broadest one will be kind of an uncertainty about what, what is this thing, right? Mm -hmm. When I start talking about the word regulation and you hear that you got to file a document with the SEC, like, oh my God, this sounds like a lot of work. I've never done this before. Traditional financing is already kind of an overwhelming process for a lot of people because it's really hard. Um, does it make sense for me to like go on this whole new journey in kind of newer waters where I have to, you know, align my marketing efforts and the rest of my business efforts with this project, like that can be an overwhelming challenge. Um, and my response to that is always that it, it's, it's a little bit more straightforward than it seems, especially if you have the right team behind you, right? Mm -hmm. So there's so many groups that we've worked with that have come into the space excited, but unsure of what to do. Experience matters in this arena. The, the tools to succeed can be generalized across offerings and my, my team, our team can, can help an issuer who's excited about this path, kind of figure out, you know, how, how to navigate it and work with a, a, a whole roster of partner service providers. So you, you need a good lawyer, for example, or something like that. We, we know a few that are proven in the space. Other than that, you know, the people who are aware and understand it, I think, you know, a lot of people are, are scared, right? It's uh, scared of the success or lack thereof that the offering might have because you're you're going out to the world and you're saying, I want to, I want to raise this capital and people are going to see you do it. And what if I fail? Um, and, and yeah, I think as in any campaign, failure is an option that you have to be prepared for, but it can be mitigated. Um, if you, like I said, staff the right team and do the, do the research and understand your potential customer and investor, like those are all signals for success. Um, there's also lots of friendly provisions within these regulations. You know, a company that's interested in doing a reggae but isn't sure if they can commit to it yet they can do it's called testing the waters like the mm. e-commerce equivalent of pre-orders and they can say hey guys would anyone be interested in investing make a super non-binding you know expression of interest you're not going to be charged anything but say you you know you might be interested in investing 500 dollars down the line and they can kind of gauge they can test the waters in their community very nice and so, I mean, I can imagine, yes, uh, you know, with every business comes the failures, but that is life-changing, business-changing money to get that much in your bank account through a successful raise. And so um, any companies that have gone, you know, uh, from the equity crowdfunding to retail to being acquired that you can highlight that have kind of gone full cycle? Yeah, I mean, there, there's a lot, right? Like I think as the space, again, gets, you know, a little bit more some or sophisticated companies come to it and the earlier ones have more time for their eventual exit to come like those stories are becoming you know more and more popular so whether it's like i mentioned trust stamp you know making their way onto the nasdaq they're not the only wow. ones who have done that there's there's companies that have you know used these rounds to grow their business to the point that they're doing major public listings um, there are exits through acquisition um, as well. There's a company called Gatsby that mm -hmm. I won't speak about because we have limited time, but you can look it up. They, they were acquired recently and their, their background has been in equity crowdfunding too. So it's, it's, it's a really powerful way 
to, to grow a company. And I think what people are starting to realize more, right, you know, if you have, if your business has a community, right, no matter what you do, if it has a community of really engaged stakeholders and followers, like, that's a huge asset, even in a traditional financing, that's something that'll turn ahead when you're mm-hmm. listing all the benefits of your business. And a, and a well executed equity crowdfunding campaign is just the creation of this awesome group of community and stakeholders. If you already have it, you're rewarding them and you're getting them deeper in. If you don't have one and you're successful in building one, now you've got this huge community that's invested um, in what you do. And that's going to pay dividends through all your future activities. Very nice. Well, a lot of great tips here. And um, just in general, for anyone launching, are there any like top you know, mistakes to avoid or what do projects want to, you know, make sure that they're set up for success, uh, kind of going into the process and what can they prepare, um, you know, prior to engaging a platform like you? Yeah, totally. I think, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm, maybe I'm biased in saying this because I am the team in this case, but I think working with the right team is important. A team that's aligned with where you are and what you want to do, um, that has the experience you know, I think the mistake that a lot of people do often make, a lot of founders make when they go into this process is is kind of the mistake that I think people made, you know, when they were opening online stores 20 years mm-hmm. ago, like if I build it, they will come. So, oh yeah, I'll put this offering up and I'll spend as little money as possible putting that together and I'll get the cheapest law- lawyer I can find because it's just a document, who cares? And I don't need to market it. I'll do it myself. And you get lost in the sea of so many things that right. people are have the potential to buy or invest in um, online. So preparation is important, right? Everyone wants effective investment in what they do. Like you're going to put time and money into building a campaign. You want it to, to pay off um, down the line. So knowing the things that are important to your business, knowing your strengths, building the, the right team, um, and then taking that team out to market, uh, I think is is a precursor for anybody's success. That's phenomenal. Well, Aaron, um, so share with us, like what is the future of DealMaker? Highlight your platform. What exactly do you do? How can it help equity crowdfunding entrepreneurs launch their project? And Yeah, totally. So, you know, DealMaker is a group of companies. Um, the, the core of our business is a technology platform. Um, we call it kind of the Shopify of the capital markets. So Anyone listening to this who's familiar with equity crowdfunding or is about to go Google it and become familiar with it, you know, you're going to see platforms that kind of work like Amazon, where there's a bunch of offerings listed, just like there's a bunch of goods on Amazon. And you search for shoes, just like you search for robotics companies, and you see all of them next to each other. And when I invest, I'm I'm doing it through an account with this kind of intermediary, um, like I buy stuff on Amazon. That's one way to raise and for a lot of groups that make sense. And I'm always happy to chat with someone about that. Um, for a lot of people selling on Shopify versus Amazon makes more sense where they put it on their website. They own the experience. It's just a tool that they go out and you know take to a customer base. Um, and, and that's what we do. So our technology lets you put that invest now button on your own offering microsite. And then you know our group of companies has other peripheral services. So we have a, a broker dealer arm, DealMaker Securities. I'm registered uh, with DealMaker Securities that provides compliance services um, for offerings because there's compliance to be done. Um, DealMaker Transfer Agent is kind of the fulfillment arm of this offering. Just like you have to ship products, you have to issue people shares. Um, so lots of pieces we can support, you know, from, from our marketing arm all the way to, to back office work. And that's something we're always excited to chat with people about. Very nice. And Aaron, what's the best way for people to get in touch with you and learn more about the platform? You, you can visit us at, at dealmaker.tech. That's the website for our technology arm. You can email me. I'm Aaron at dealmaker.tech. Um, always, always happy to chat with folks. Nice. Um, thanks, Aaron. You know, I did, um, I, I remember the Green Bay Packers case study art. Can you share, um, you know, how that happened? Yeah, totally. Um, I, I'm happy to talk a little bit about that. I think that was a huge it, it, a turning point in a lot of ways. Um, so we did have the the privilege, um, you know, about launched about a year ago, um, so late 2021, and and was live for a couple couple of months. Um, the Green Bay Packers did their most recent common stock offering. Um, so they're a very a really interesting and fascinating organization. It's the NFL's oldest team, and wow. unlike any other team in the NFL or really in like North American professional sports, they're fan owned. Um, so they've been doing that 
since the since the twenties, um, they they do these common stock offerings, um, wow. and they use the proceeds to you know fund improvements to the stadium or something. I build a, build a new wing. Um, so they did their I think it was their sixth offering um, recently, and uh, yeah, we we had the privilege of acting as the tech platform that supported uh, that offering. That was really fascinating to see. Um, it's not equity crowdfunding in that it's a it, it's not a traditional sale of a security when you you purchase a share from the Green Bay Packers when you purchase common stock you can't trade it it doesn't appreciate in value it doesn't pay a dividend um, it's more commemorative than than actually a, an investment um, opportunity but it does represent ownership in that you're a member of that inner circle um, of the team and they raise sixty five million dollars um, from over two hundred thousand people which is incredible phenomenal. Wow. Um, so what were the conversion numbers from a marketing standpoint thinking, okay, two, 200,000, how many people were on their email list? How many people went through the funnel? What does it look like? Cause that's a phenomenal rate. I, I can't, I can't speak to any specifics about that. Um, but what I will say is, you know, that's, that's a great example of a, an organization that has harnessed brand love in an incredible way, right? Like people love their football teams, obviously, but you know, the, the vigor of support, the depth of love, generational support that people have um, in Wisconsin and, and across the US for the Packers, across the world is like really incredible to see. They've built that community over decades. Um, and I, I think it's a great proof point for this mechanism, right? The, the Packers have had been doing this since well before um, you know, regulation crowdfunding was a thing, wow. right? This, this, this predates that that regulation but it's such a great proof point um for the idea that you can turn this community into a source of capital and it'll it'll deepen their love and they've had decades to do it and that love has has been passed down through generations so i think it's a great proof point very awesome aaron um what do you think about blockchain technology and just like tokenization and just like these fan tokens just kind of you know I think, in general. <laughs> I think it's incredibly exciting. A lot of it floats over my head. I'll always be transparent about that. I'm so far from an expert on crypto and Web3. Uh, yeah. blockchain, but I think it's obviously for good reason, regularly like the forefront of what people are thinking about. It's, it unlocks a lot of capacity. It's a very exciting um, next step in innovation. I think there is a real overlap in community often between the people who are excited about Reg A plus or Reg CF and the people who are excited about like crypto, for example, right? Because there's this idea of going out to everyday people and giving them something alternative. You know, we did see like an ICO craze back in the day. Mm -hmm. And I don't know a lot about those, I'll always be transparent. Um, but I will say, you know, a lot of people got dinged for doing things that were probably offside yeah, yeah. When, they were, when they were doing that sort of stuff. And the way to do it right is to do it through Reg CF or Reg A plus. Right. That's yeah. a totally compliant on-site mechanism. If you, if you do all the components to go out to a group of people and say, Hey, come invest in what we're doing. Um, right. And so for people who have gone down that path before or have seen it and are interested, but don't know how to do it. Right. The, the, the answer is equity crowdfunding. Nice. Well, Aaron, thank you very much for your time. If you're looking to launch an equity crowdfunding campaign, we'd love to help. We are crowd create. We're a marketing agency that helps businesses craft the perfect story online to be able to present it in a way that investors would be interested in. We've looked at hundreds and worked on hundreds of campaigns. We've worked on hundreds of campaigns to be able to do this and have our own unique one-of-a-kind strategies that would be able to help you. So contact us and we'd love to help. If you like this video, subscribe to our channel and watch our other videos on all things fundraising, marketing, and to be able to present your business and raise capital online.